I'm starving. Now you're mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back. Pour the wine, bring the pies. I have wonderful news. <laughs> Sir, help us! What's going on here? Uh, nothing, nothing. He was trying to eat us. <laughs> Again, Mr. Thorstein. <laughs> Uh, I'm starving. I will hit a bear. <laughs> he will probably hit you first. Hey, you gave me an idea. I did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright. Hello friends, my name is Ari Ferger and today I'm going to talk about the bear as the king of all animals. Now, if you have seen my previous videos, you know that I usually talk about Scandinavian studies history, archaeology, paganism and so on. But if you have seen the title of this playlist, it's called Blog Deems. So I talk about the things I write at my blogs. And today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. So let's get started. When people ask you what animal is the king of all animals, the first creature that comes to mind is the lion. But in truth, before the church imposed the lion as the king of all animals, the bear was the king of the forest, at least in the European continent. The bear was a symbol of power, strength and majesty. It is possible that our ancestors during prehistoric times already worshipped bears, and we can see bear skulls aligned in niches in caves, and they weren't placed there at random. So there might have been an early bear cult. But unlike that image we grow up with, of people living in caves, our ancestors actually built houses made of huge animal bones, tusks, tree trunks, animal skins and so on. So those caves with beautiful paintings were in fact our ancestors' first temples. But let's not go back so much in history. Anyway, we can find traces of the utmost respect and even fear and also admiration our ancestors had for these creatures. For instance, in folk tales, of course, changed by time and the different social and political realities throughout history and, of course, the new faiths. We can also see it in sacred places, Christianized, but were once places of pagan deities, but with a new faith became the dwelling places of saints and Christian mythological accounts. For instance, the Celts used to worship a goddess represented with a bear on her side or in front of her. The bear goddess called Harthio, whose name has a lot of similarities with Harther, who in turn has a name connected with bears. So Harthio was a primitive goddess linked to the fertilizing forces of the earth, in a time when gods had not yet been anthropomorphized and were still represented as animals. There were early Christian accounts that show the importance the bear had to the pagans. And as such, the devil often took the form of a bear to come and terrorize the monks. So this means that the king of all animals was turned against those who admire it the most by demonizing the poor animal. In the Jewish and Christian traditions, the bear often has a negative symbology. And you can see that in the Old Testament. When the missionaries began their process of evangelization throughout Europe, they encountered a variety of pagan deities which were either associated with bears or were bears themselves. To the Germanic and Celtic populations of Europe, the bear was associated with royalty. So it isn't a coincidence that the most famous legendary King Harter was also associated with the bear. And it is interesting to see that the bear, well, the she-bear, is connected with the warrior goddess Brigid, of whom the Celtic kings were sons of, making them little bear cubs. Therefore, the connection between the kings and the bears. 
So there was the necessity to Christianize this goddess. And so Saint Bridget was born. And later, this goddess, already Christianized, was connected with a real person, a real Havas from Kildare, which was named Bridget, who died in the year of 525 of our era. To the Germanic and Scandinavian peoples, the bear was connected with the warrior spirit, personified by the god Thor. And it appears that in certain Germanic groups, one of the imposed trials to young warriors was the solitary bear hunt. Although it hasn't been proven yet if these initiation rites were real or just mythical. Anyway, what is real is that the strength and ferocity of this animal was an inspiration to the Germanic and Scandinavian warriors. Many ancient cities throughout Europe still have the representation of the bear in their coat of arms. The survival evidences of the bear being the king of all animals before the church replaced the symbolic functions of the bear for the lion. So the lion was this exotic animal and by the time it replaced the bear, sometime in the year 1000, the, the lion didn't belong to the European fauna and as such it was almost a mythical creature, therefore it was easily adopted. But to this day some cities such as Bern in Switzerland and Berlin in Germany, to name a few, still have the representation of the bear in their coat of arms. It's not a coincidence that during the reign of Charlemagne a lot of bears were hunted down almost till extinction because of the cult of the Germanic peoples and the gods associated with this animal. And of course, loads of sacred trees were taken down. But we have often heard about a forest devastation held by Charlemagne and his nobles, but we do not often hear about the bear hunt. To the church, during medieval times, the bear was the personification of evil, ferocity and chaos, because the creature lived in the dense and almost unreachable forests. The forests were the dwelling places of the pagans. In truth, the forests were the places the pagans considered to be sacred, once, but now it was their refuge from the horrible acts of forced Christianization. But the bear started to enter in the Christian mythology in another way. It became the symbol of the divine dominating chaos, because the only ones who could contact with these terrible creatures and turn them into docile animals were the hermits, those who would seek the most inhospitable places to live in solitude for spiritual reasons. Only through their faith and the connection with the divine and the power of God could they do such a thing, turning a ferocious beast into a docile companion. Thus the bear became the symbol of the victory of the divine over chaos and we can actually see this representation in the story of Saint Columbanus and his many encounters with bears and befriending them. Now, for obvious reasons, I cannot speak about Saint Columbanus and the bear stories associated with this saint, uh, because this video will be too long. But if at least 20 of you ask me about it, I can make a video about solely on Saint Columbanus and all these accounts with bears and befriending bears, so you can understand how the bear entered in the medieval Christian mythology as a sort of propaganda to bring more pagans into the new faith. The bear was also associated with the devil and a symbol of the many vices and sins condemned by the church. And there were many accounts of bears being the evil creatures of chaos, to the point that they became the, the creatures that would kidnap beautiful young maidens and rape them. And we can still see in many folk tales uh, the, the bear being the bad guy of the story. And this might be the beginning of the creation of the story of the beauty and the beast. Highly infantilized and softened by Disney and thank the gods for that because no child would want to hear the real account. So in conclusion, the fight of the church against the bear was a symbolic way and in some cases a very real way of free territories from their pagan past and Christianize those same territories 
and place order over chaos. Unfortunately, the bear had a very negative connotation during the Middle Ages. But at the same time, the symbolism the bear had uh, during pagan times somehow survived till nowadays. And I'm sure all of us remember the childhood stories of the she-bear being the kind and caring mother. And it isn't a coincidence that to this day there are many children that, are sti that still sleep with their teddy bears. Alright friends, I know this subject was a little bit different than usual, but I hope you have enjoyed it all the same. All the links to my social media are down below at the description. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video and of course, talk for it all.